small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure, or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Braubritter is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends or family? Then don't. Friends are technically like family. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. Lousy auras there. No, role-playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium. So there's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art the Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? There's a box that says Wirral, 3rd edition Mega Setting Supplements Module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway. Without wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. 
It's your own fault if you're ill. Got it? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gold bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. This is just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. The book contains descriptions of various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom, made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. It is supposedly invigorating and good for the circulation. It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pale and leave them there for 30 to 60 days. Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. For general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pale. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxin. This is exactly what you need. I don't know. I don't want to be the party pooper. But this pale territory sounds sort of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't walk in it naked. There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. You close the book and return it to its place on the shelf. Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no! Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The, board, the maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. 
To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mid Coudon. It's somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock. You feel you're just west of Coal City, somewhere above Jamrock and close to Coal City. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation, Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, archipelago. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the North Azimuth. Grad is the Northeast Azimuth. Samara is the East Azimuth. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insel Indian are known to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large, perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. That old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers and designed the new street lamps. They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. It would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Slowly, you move your hand toward the map attached to the board. Before you even reach the map, you're interrupted. <clears throat> Perhaps not. It's against RCM policy to defraud small business owners. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply remove a body from a tree. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen.